coming up on Hope Arising, how your giving is making a kingdom impact, plus how your support is touching lives in one of the most dangerous cities in America and overcoming fear with your finances. Pastor Jim Baker will break down what the Bible has to say about our relationship with money and the spirit of mammon. Hope Arising starts now. Oh, we welcome all of you to our Hope Arising fundraiser. We are so blessed and honored to have you join us. You know, there is so much uncertainty out there in the world's economy, but I want you to know, not in God's economy. There's no inflation. There's no recession in God's kingdom and economy. And you are going to learn biblical principles during our time together that I believe are going to benefit and encourage you. You know, there's a scripture in Hosea chapter 2 and verse 15 that says, when the people were in the valley of Achor, that word Achor means trouble or weeping. It says that God would open to them a door of hope. And you know, Pastor Jay, I believe that Cornerstone Television is that door of hope. We have the answer to people that are in trouble. Maybe they're fearful. Maybe they're just overwhelmed with all that's going on in the world today. That's so true, Pastor Gary. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, it says, God has opened for me a great and an effectual door, but with it, there are many adversaries. So listen, if you are facing many adversaries. We believe this week, this block of time, God is opening up doors in the midst of your trial and tribulation and get ready to bring a breakthrough into your life. I think it's so profound that this is a season, Pastor Amy, where we're going to see God open up doors in troubled lands. Oh, absolutely. You know, and you, you mentioned the economy, Pastor Gary, and you know, I can't help but feel it myself as I go to the grocery store. It's like, wow, that seemed a little bit more than usual. Or, or I go to the gas station. It's like, whoo, Jesus, thank you, God, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Paying the utilities, it just seems like Everything has gone up, but we have to remember as kingdom kids that when Jesus came, he preached the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven there is, and there's the kingdom of earth. And we do operate, Jay, not in just a natural kingdom, but we are part of a spiritual, supernatural kingdom. And it doesn't make sense in the natural, in our earthly minds, but it makes sense if you do it God's way, the kingdom way. That's right. And any time that there is a famine in the land, God always sends a word. So listen, let everybody know to tune in right now because I believe God has a word for you in due season. And no matter what's going on in the economy, what's happening in the world system, the kingdom of God trumps everything that's going on in the world. You know, speaking of all of the trouble, one of the most dangerous cities in America is right here in the Pittsburgh area. And one of Cornerstone's ministry partners is bringing hope to McKeesport one block at a time. Take a look at the Pittsburgh Dream Center's God Story. Pittsburgh Dream Center is an outreach ministry that's focused in serving the people of the community and of our city. And John Maxwell says people don't care what we know until they know truly how much we care. And that's what we've done for the last 12 years is to find the need and ask God how we can bring healing to it, to show people that we truly care. And that's given us a platform and an opportunity to share our faith in action, but also in words. It is about showing people, can you imagine that are hurting, they're angry about their life situation. And so they act out in violent ways because they don't know any other way to express themselves. But God has given us this opportunity that that one that may is filled with anger in the moment, but that they might would know there is a God who sees them, a God who cares about them, people on the earth who love them. And that's why I believe that in this season, God has called the Pittsburgh Dream Center to be planted in McKeesport.
The National Security and Safety Commission ranks McKeesport the fourth most violent city in America, stricken by poverty, addiction, violence. There is nothing human that we can do to fix the problems of our communities. God is our answer and we must turn to him and we know that we have this place in McKeesport on purpose and with a purpose and it's kingdom business. We have an acronym that we use called GROW to describe who we are. For the G, we are generous. We love to give to people so that they can know the heart of their Heavenly Father, just like God gave Jesus for us. The R is relational. We wanna make sure we're building and cultivating relationship because life is meant to be done together. And then the O is outreach. So we have several different forms of outreach we do some of which we are grateful that Cornerstone Television has partnered with us because hunger relief is a huge need in our areas. The different ministries are Adopt-A-Block, where we go door to door with groceries and other needs that people might have. And we love it, the opportunity that we have to sometimes go inside their home and gather and pray with them. Another ministry we have where we reach out is Bags of Hope. And this is where the children in the McKee Sports School District, they went to bed hungry. The reality is in Allegheny County, one of every four children go to bed hungry. So we wanted to be a part of this hunger relief and we said yes. So we pack Bags of Hope every week and deliver them to the school. So that way these children can take home a bag of food for the weekend. And then the W is God's Word. Every outreach that we do, adopt a block or street outreach, when we take a hot meal down and we walk the streets of Pittsburgh and we let those people know that they are seen, we're doing this because we're standing on God's Word. Well, from our hearts here at the Pittsburgh Dream Center, we just want to say a huge Thank you to all of those who support Cornerstone Television Network. I know that our life and the everyone, Gary, that we serve, their lives are changed because of your donations. Yes, and thank you for your giving. Thank you for your graciousness. Um, into the kingdom of God. We're part of his kingdom, and we are trying to advance it here in McKeesport. So we just ask that you continue to pray uh, you know, for us, for wisdom, but also for the city of McKeesport. There are strongholds you know, in this city, just like many different neighborhoods and communities. And through prayer, you know, we'll break down the strongholds, we'll break that evilness from that. So thank you for your prayers, thank you for your support, and God bless you, Cornerstone Television. Well, I'm here with the co-founder of the Pittsburgh Dream Center. You know her as Amanda on our programs. But, you know, what an incredible thing when we... Are, you know, when you're involved with Cornerstone, you're partnering with all these ministries. You know, Amanda, I, I hear this um, about McKeesport. I grew up across the river from McKeesport in West Mifflin, and it was just McKeesport. It wasn't like this dangerous place. I'm sure there was problems, but, you know, it's still just people, people who need Jesus. I, I, I get the opportunity to come down and preach occasionally at the Dream Center at the Sunshine Feeding Program there. And I'm blessed all the time to talk to these people because God has something for them. And when people are partnering with us, they're partnering with ministries like yours. That's right, so true. And you know, I just wanna thank you once again. When I think of that word generosity, I think of you. Because if it wasn't for the partnership that Cornerstone brings to the table to help us, just let me give you some numbers. Cause I know some of y'all are numbers people. But literally on a monthly basis, we take 320 meals down to our homeless friends. Those are hot cooked prepared meals that we have teams that go down every week. We serve about 300 hot meals at that Monday chapel and meal in a month's time. And that takes a lot of work. You're there, you get to bring the word on a monthly basis. And then we have 240 bags that we pack every month that go home. And in that bag are three meals and snacks for two days 
for the kids over the weekend. I mean, and these are some real numbers. One of, of the things that's great about that is Cornerstone actually pays for the food that that's is distributed. Right. Yes. Uh, because, you know, we, we just believe in the ministry. So again, this is something that you're doing. When you're involved with Cornerstone, you're involved with all our great programming, with our prayer line, with all the things that, that we do here at the station, but around the world as well. And right in our locality here, right? 20 minutes away in McKeesport, mm -hmm. you're touching lives. I've seen it. I've been part of it. That's I've right. seen what God has done. Just the last time Jean and I were down there ministering to young lady there. So uh, right. we, I just uh, appreciate your partnership. We're going to have an opportunity for you to, to partner with us a little bit later in this program and just believe that God is going to do amazing things through what you do. So right now we're going to take a, a Time to go over with Amy and a very special guest. We are here live on set of Hope Arising, and I'm with our very special guest tonight, Jim Baker, and his wife, Mary, are the senior leaders of Zion Christian Fellowship in Powell and Pickerington, Ohio. James has a passion to see people transformed and equipped to supernaturally demonstrate God's kingdom in their sphere of influence. He's the founder of wealthwithgod.com, which explores wealth building for world changers. Come on now, that's you. Pastor James, we are so glad to have you with us today. Glad to be here. Yeah, this is gonna be good. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Did I say that right? Pickerington. I've never ever said that word. Well, we actually sold that campus and we uh, took a million dollars and gave it to our human trafficking project. But yeah, we still have nice. the Powell campus. We still have our Powell campus. Yeah. Beautiful. So. And how long have you been there? And, and 15 years. Yeah. Wow. So 15 years. So it's been incredible. So a uh, hungriest group of people that I know. And so uh, we call ourselves a terrorist training camp to destroy the works of the devil. Nice. So yeah, we're, we're on offense, not on so defense. So if I, if I go to your church next Sunday, what am I going to find? You're going to find uh, the presence of God. You're going to find freedom of worship. Uh, you're going to get healed. And um, so we've been going after healing, I think, 34 weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. And so we've just seen incredible things. Uh, we've had, yeah, our church has seen uh, just yay God things. I mean, they're all, I mean, the only thing that we do well is we point people to Jesus. They get their eyes on him. Good things happen. But, yeah, we've had people get out of wheelchairs and metal dissolve out of bodies and over a, dead, uh, over a dozen people raised from the dead. And wow. uh, thank God none of them died during church. We don't have like an Ananias and Sapphira type ministry. We're trying to ha have it or anything <laughs> like that. But yeah, like, God's doing awesome things. And yeah. so yeah, we're, we're having fun. Where did this passion to teach people about wealth and doing it the kingdom way, where did that start in your life? Yeah, so in 2008, when we started leading the church. We were going on an all out ballistic assault going after healing. You're like, what's that mean? Well, uh, I'm not saying we had wisdom, but we had zeal. So like we're standing in handicapped places at Walmart knowing whoever pulled in would need prayer. Right, we're showing up uninvited to emergency rooms, knowing that there's sick people in the emergency rooms, right? And so I remember uh, some of our teenagers, they felt the Lord uh, prompting them to go to the emergency room. So they get there and there's a lady sitting there and she's weeping and they said, well, what's going on? And uh, she said, well, my baby's died in my womb. I'm here to have a DNC, a dilation and curatage. I can remove the baby. And <clears throat> they said, can we pray for you? I say, pray for her. And the baby starts leaping in the womb. The baby's resurrected from the dead in the womb. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she's screaming, she's celebrating, and another lady says, well, what's going on? So she comes over, she's holding her baby. And, uh, and so they say, well, why are you here? And so they shared the testimony with her, and the lady's like, well, I don't really believe. They said, can we pray for you? The lady says, well, I don't really believe in God. And our teenager said, well, God believes in you. Like I said, they had zeal. I'm not saying they had wisdom, but they imposed their will on this lady. And the baby had a paralyzed arm. It was about three months old. They prayed for the baby. The baby's arm starts moving right there in the ER room. So just we're going after healing on an all out ballistic assault. And I felt like the Lord said, Jim, I want you to go after finances the way you went after healing. I'm like, seriously, health and wealth with the name Jim Baker? Is there anything more offensive than that, right? <laughs> Jim Baker with one K and no Tammy Faye. Okay. And so, the, um, so uh, I took about a year and read about 100 books on finances. Mm -hmm. And I plan on doing about a six-part series. I wouldn't normally read that much, but, you know, I grew up in the 80s where it was so a Toyota to rape a Ferrari, yes. you know, all sorts of craziness. <laughs> and so we, uh, <laughs> yeah, and so we, uh, so we, you know, I, I ended up doing an 18-part series on finances. So mm -hmm. taught on nothing uh, about finances from September through March, but I didn't even teach on giving until week 13. Because what wow. happens, if you don't have the heart conditions right, people are just using their money mm -hmm. to try to get God to give them something. It's like wow. they're like a divine slot machine. And so, uh, but as a result of that, about 25% of our church, my wife says 50, so somewhere between 25 and 50% of our church got completely out of debt in those 12 months, uh, wow. within 12 months, just getting the heart conditions right. Many of them, including paying off their houses. Mm -hmm. So people are like, well, how can that happen? Well, third John two says you prosper mm -hmm. 
-hmm. as your soul prospers. Right. So as you begin to prosper on the inside, it's eventually going to work itself on the outside. So. Wow, that is why you, you have to go right now and get a pen, get a paper. You've got to take notes because, Jim, why must they stay tuned? Well, money is not the most important thing in life, but it does affect a lot of things that are important. It'll affect your ability to make health decisions, be generous, have experience with your family. But if you don't care about any of that, then just go tune in somewhere else. But if you do care about your finances, then yeah, grab a piece of paper. It's going to be fire. Fun fact about Jim Baker. I'm not telling any of the stuff you have written down no, there. Okay, one, one thing he's gifted at is he knows all the words to 80s TV shows. Is that impressive or what? It's that not is... one of the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12, but somehow <laughs> that's the one I got. Facts yes. of life. Facts of life. You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the facts, facts of, of life. life. Facts of life. There's a time you got to go. Yeah, we, we could go on, but yeah. This is amazing. Listen, you do not want to miss this time together. But in all sincerity, God has something for you. So you need to stay tuned. And when we come back, how you can break off fear and anxiety with your finances with Pastor Jim Baker. We'll be right back. Have you checked out the variety of programs we air on CTVN? I'm Amanda Brocker, one of the hosts on Hope Today. Judith wrote in saying, thank you for your wonderful programs. I enjoy Rick Renner, 700 Club, CBN News, Joyce Meyer, Bible Discovery, among many others. Our programs are made possible by your giving. Thank you for helping us share Jesus 24 seven. Hope happens here. Hey guys, so glad, and uh, I'm, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. I encourage you to get out a piece of paper, not just to take notes, but you're gonna need a blank sheet of paper. I'm having you do an exercise at the end. It's gonna help you break off the spirit of mammon. I believe that's the number one reason why Christians aren't prospering. So as we get started, can we just start off with an admission? Yes, there's been bad teaching on finances in the church in the past. There's also been bad teaching on heaven, and I still plan on going there, right? There's been bad teaching on grace, and I still plan on receiving it every day of my life. So fear of error is not a reason to ignore truth. If you're ignoring truth, you're already in error, right? So let me give you my definition of prosperity as we, as we get started here. You guys ready for this? Is you have no financial debt. Financial leverage is something different. I'm not going to talk about that. You have no financial debt, and you have more than enough resources to fulfill every divine assignment God has for you and enough left over to help others fulfill theirs. What do you think about that definition? You have no financial debt, and you have more than enough resources to fulfill every divine assignment God has for you and enough left over to help others fulfill theirs. So prosperity doesn't mean that every Christian is going to be a zillionaire, right? If you're a farmer in Uganda, your finances are going to look different than someone who's called to reach the Hollywood elite. Like, which one's better? Well, neither one's better. The idea is we stay in our lane, and God gives us the provision for the vision, right? He gives us the resources to accomplish whatever assignment he has for us in that season. So if you're Joseph in prison in the Bible, abundance for Joseph doesn't mean you've got the finest chariot in the land and a palace on a hill, but it means you're going to have the wisdom, you're going to have the emotional health, you're going to have the favor that got him to appointed to head of all the prisoners and be able to have to complete his assignment in that season. So if God can get money through you, he'll get money to you and there'll be plenty left over for you. That's a powerful thought. I want you to picture a hose. Right? So you are that hose, and the resources are that money that's flowing through. And here's the good news. The inside of a hose gets wet. Right? And so if, you, if God can get money through you, he'll get money to you, and there'll be plenty left over for you. I got some good news. God does not mind meeting your needs in style. Right? His name is El Shaddai, not El Chipo. How are we doing? <clears throat> so um, I grew up in a denomination that was big on giving to missions. And I love that. I love hearing the stories here that you guys, your, your, your TV station, you're not just putting out word ministry nationally and internationally, but right here in the city. I love that. But um, I would hear stories that went like this from the missionaries. The missionary family, they're out in the mission field, they're broke, they've got no food, they've got no resources, and they would sit at the table, and by faith they would set the table, knowing that they had no food. They put the plate, the knife, the fork, and they would hold hands and pray, and as they're praying, be a knock at the door. And they would go and answer the door, and there's a family standing there with groceries, and the needs are met. Like, the, we, lo we need those stories. Like, how many of you heard those kind of stories before, right? But here's what we need even more, is we need people who not only have the resources, but they have the ability to hear from God on where to deploy those resources. That's what I call a kingdom wealth builder. Okay, I believe that's what I'm talking to tonight, or today, or whatever you're listening to this, is a kingdom wealth builder is someone who's turning their dollars into soldiers to accomplish kingdom purposes. 
I'll tell you what, I really like that definition. Dollars into soldiers to accomplish kingdom purposes. Now, I'm going to give you a 15-second sermon on finances, probably the greatest sign and wonder you've ever seen. A preacher doing a 15-second sermon on finances. Everything I'm going to tell you is true, but it doesn't work for most Christians because of the spirit of mammon. So I'm going to, I'm going to hear, here it is. Ready? Who in here needs more finances? Yeah, preacher, we need more finances. And then begin to talk about how poverty and lack are not God's will. Absolutely true. Begin to talk about sowing and reaping. If you'll sow generously, you'll reap generously. 100% true. The Bible even has that in the context of finances. It talks about how you can get a 30, 60, yay, even a 100-fold return in your finances, right? All of that's true, and all of that's in the context of the finances in the Bible. But here's the problem. Um, it's all biblical, and it's all true. Then how come Christians aren't walking in this? Here's the problem. is When you don't have your heart right, it reverses our relationship with God. So now I'm using God to go and get me more money. Here's the deal, guys. He's God. You're his servant, and you're turning those dollars and his soldiers to accomplish kingdom purposes. So the problem is the spirit of mammon comes in, reverses our relationship with God. So let's talk about the spirit of mammon. When you see here the spirit of mammon, don't picture like a demon wrapped around your brain, okay? It's uh, like Ephesians 4 where Paul says you're going to be made new in the spirit of your mind, okay? I believe the spirit of mammon is the number one reason why Christians aren't prospering. If I'm talking too fast, you can just watch it again. I get excited about this topic, okay? And so uh, turn with me to your iPhones in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, and here's from the English Standard Version. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. He says, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And so uh, some of your Bible translations may say God and money, but uh, you'll look in the little footnote there, it'll say it's the word mammon. So what's mammon? Mammon was the demon god of Syria, whose name meant the power of riches. So here's Jesus. He's a brilliant teacher. He's setting up, you can either put your trust in the one true God, or you can put your trust in the spiritual influence behind money. <clears throat> so here's what Mammon does. Mammon tries to get you to look to money the way you're supposed to look to the one true God. I want you to think about this. So if you begin to feel more significant and more secure when you've got more money in your checking account, that's the spirit of Mammon because your security and your significance is supposed to come from God himself. Okay? Our security comes from God himself. So here's what I want to do. I want to read you some popular Bible verses, but I want to read you what they sound like when the spirit of mammon gets hold of them. Okay, you guys ready for this? Popular Bible verses, spirit of mammon when it twists it. Here's what it sounds like when the spirit of mammon gives it to you. Where does my help come from? My help comes from money. When I have money, it leaves me beside still waters. Money is an ever-present help in time of need. My people perish for a lack of money. My money shall supply all my needs. A day in the mall is better than thousands elsewhere, right? And so that's what, uh, behind mammon is this great lie, like, yeah, God takes care of those super saints, but you're not one of those super saints. So what you need to do is you need to spend a lot of time worrying and fretting, how am I going to get more money? Here's the deal, guys. You don't need more money. You need a greater relationship with the Lord. Here's, uh, here's what it looks like to serve and worship mammon, Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing. Hope you guys are sitting down for this one. Are you ready for this? Anxiety and worry are to the spirit of mammon what praise and worship are to the one true God. When you're worrying about money, you're literally bowing your knee to a lesser God and saying, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I can't believe I'm singing on television here. This is, this is, this is my dream. This is my dream is happening here today. I want you guys to get this. Fear is faith in the devil. Okay? Worry is a form of atheism because it's imagining your future without God. Faith is imagining your future with God. I got some super good news for you. God's already in your future. He'll be there when you get there, so you don't need to worry. Okay? I want you guys to get this. God's supernatural cannot flow into fear and worry. It's like heaven's, heaven's blessings are open. Jesus, uh, ever since Jesus paid for it on the cross. Let me, let me just make this. I'm going to go off notes here for a second. I'm going to make a, a strong statement. I'm going to back it up. God would no more rather have you in poverty than he would have you in adultery. He paid for you to come out of both. That's a strong statement. God would no more rather have you in poverty than he would have you in adultery. He paid for you to come out of both. If you remember how um, poverty came on earth, it came uh, with uh, thorns and thistles and the sweat of the brow. What did Jesus take on the cross? He took thorns and thistles in his brow and shed blood to break the curse of poverty. Remember, his inaugural ministry said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news to the poor. What's good news to the poor? You ain't got to be poor anymore. Then he goes on, he says he's going to open blind eyes. He's going to set captives free. And so the, uh, he gives a negative condition, then he's going to change it. Blind eyes, he's going to open. Captives, he's going to set free. What was the solution to poverty? It was the gospel. It was the good news being preached. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Somehow the gospel of the kingdom has in it the seeds to pull you out of poverty. There is no prosperity gospel. 
But the gospel of the kingdom includes prosperity. The gospel prospers. How are we doing? Are we okay here so far? All right. Uh, let me make this statement. You don't need more money. You need a greater relationship with the source. Okay? Don't, don't ever get this confused. God is the source. Everything else is a resource. Don't confuse the source with the resource. How many of you guys recognize the Old Testament prophets had it rough? Like, oh man. Um, Isaiah had to walk around naked for three years. I'm like, I don't even take my shirt off at the pool anymore. Uh, last time I did, there was threats of some lawsuits from some retinal damage from the glare spots because my body was so white. Um, Hosea was there, asked to marry a prostitute named Gomer. I'm like, her name was Gomer. You should have known things were about to go horribly wrong. My apologies to any Gomers out there. Um, Ezekiel was asked to cook his food over his own dung. Now, that's hilarious when you're in junior high, but when you're an adult, that's completely disgusting, right? You can see why the church has been a nonprofit organization for so long. Um, Elijah, God says, Elijah, I want you to prophesy a famine. He's like, I'm an Old Testament prophet. I love prophesying famines in the land that you're living in. He's like, man, how about we couldn't do it? The Amorites, the parasites, the termites, the cellulites, the mosquito bites. He's like, no, Elijah, in the land that you're living in. He says, don't worry, I got a sweet resource of provision for you. I want you to go to the brook Cherith. Remember that? So he goes there, he's got the water, he's got the Amazon now, ravens sending him food every day. Everything is going good until the brook dries up. Now, what do most Christians do when the brook dries up? They start freaking out. God's abandoning me, this giving isn't working, right? And so, again, don't confuse the source with the resource. Your resource of provision is going to change many times in your life. Maybe uh, it's your job, maybe it's your parents, maybe it's still your parents, no judgment here. Um, uh, you know, pension, Social Security, whatever it might be. Those are just resources of provision. The source of provision never changes. So he looked to God. Every time the resource of provision, provision changed in Elijah's life, here's the very next verse. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah. So you may be in a season here where it's like your brook is drying up, where your resource of provision has changed. What do you need to do? You need to get the word of the Lord. So God says, Elijah, I want you to go to the city of Zarephath and find a widow. I'm sure he was like, Lord, did you say window? Is there like a window of blessing? No, Elijah, she's a widow. Is widow like the last name of like a Boaz type person? No, Elijah, she's a widow. Why is this strange? Well, there wasn't like a lot of uh, female entrepreneurs on Shark Tank in the ancient Near East. Her resource of provision was her husband, okay? And so, uh, so he's, he goes there and he says, he goes there and he says, he sees a woman and she's foraging through the rubble, trying to find enough sticks to start a fire. Uh, that ain't a good sign in your new resource of provision, right? And so uh, Elijah talks to her and he says, hey, can you get me something to eat? And she says, listen, it's kind of a bad time. Got a little bit of flour got a little bit of oil. My son and I are going to make one last cake that we might eat of it and then die. Not the mighty faith declaration you're looking for out of your new resource of provision, right? So I'm expecting Elijah to take up an offering for this poor widow, right? Find some people of means in the city. And he does take up an offering for himself. Remember that? He says, bake me a cake as fast as you can, right? Bring me a cake that I might eat of it. Can you just see the newspaper headlines like prophet of God takes last meal from widow, right? Those prophets had it rough. Why is Elijah doing this? Listen, guys, Elijah was not after her, her resources. God was not after her resources. But he knew if he could get her eyes off of the resource and onto the source, supernatural provision could flow into your life. Listen, guys, 99.9999% of preachers are not after your money. What we're trying to do is get your eyes off of the resource and onto the source so supernatural provision can flow into your life. See, the spirit of mammon... Um, Elijah knew that the spirit of mammon had already captured her heart. And he knew if he could get her eyes in the right place, things could happen. If you get nothing out of this message, catch this phrase. Nobody can take better care of me than dad. Boy, you get that lesson in your heart, it breaks off the spirit of mammon. Nobody can take better care of me than dad. Because mammon puts this deep fear in your heart. You know, God's not going to take care of you. you got to take care of yourself. you got to get on the internet and start finding all these ways you can make money. Matthew 6, 26. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? I got some good news for you. Provision comes to you because God loves you more than birds. <laughs> That's good news. How do most people try to get their needs met? Through sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping is not to get your needs met. If you got a need, sow a seed. Just because it rhymes doesn't mean it supersedes scripture. How are we doing out there? Okay? Sowing and reaping is to increase your harvest of righteousness. Okay? As believers, we don't give to get. It's way better than that. We give to get so we can give away even more. Your harvest of righteousness in 2 Corinthians 9 was your ability to be generous. So we don't, uh, we don't, we're not trying to, we don't have to perform in order for God to provide. If, uh, if my kids, when they were little, if they came home from school and said, Dad, I gave away 10% of my sandwich at lunch, can I have dinner? I'd be a horrible father if my kids thought they had to perform in order for me to provide. Okay, here's some good news, guys. Um, a lot of people, they're treating tithe like it's, uh, like it's hush money to the mafia. 
that if they don't send their tithe in, that God's going to send Guido to break their kneecaps. He's going to send the uh, devourer to eat their crops. Here's some good news. He's God the Father, not the Godfather. Okay? So our giving is to increase our harvest of righteousness. It's not, it says they neither sow nor reap nor store in barns. What do most people do? They're either, they're either trying to manipulate God with the divine slot machines of heaven with their giving. That's the spirit of mammon. Or they're hoarding it. They're, they're, they're storing in barns. They're trying to hoard it. And as a believer, remember, if God can get money through you, he'll get money to you. And there'll be plenty left over for you. Have you ever seen a bird having a panic attack? No, um, but we've seen plenty of people doing that. Why? Because birds have this innate thing on the inside that nobody can take better care of me than dad. When you understand this, you could literally walk into your place of business tomorrow and your boss hands you a pink slip and your blood pressure doesn't even increase because you know nobody can take better care of me than dad. You can step into financial freedom today. You don't have to wait till there's a certain number of zeros in your bank account. You can actually step into financial freedom today when you recognize this. Nobody can take better care of me than dad. So if you remember at the beginning of this broadcast, or the beginning of my time at least, I should get a piece of paper. So if you're just tuning in, I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Go get a blank sheet of paper and something to write with. We're going to do an exercise here. And we're going to break that spirit of mammon off of you. And we see people that begin, it's, it's like, you know, God's, if, if God's blessings are raining on your life, the spirit of mammon is like an umbrella. It's like that fear and anxiety. God, God can't bless that. So we're going to break it off your life. And I think you're going to see something, uh, something shift in your finances. So get a piece of paper, something to write with, and we're going to go ahead and do that. While you're doing that, I just, uh, I just thought of a story. I have a friend, and he, um, <clears throat> he, uh, he, the Lord has asked him to give away all of his money three different times. Okay? Now listen, if the Lord doesn't ask you to give away your money and you give it all away, you're a bad steward and you will not be rewarded. Okay? So don't hear what I'm not saying. But I want you to hear how free he was. And so, um, so the last time his daughter was in college, and so he's like, you know, they had bills and stuff. And he felt like the Lord said, give away your money again. And he said this. He said... Um, he said, uh, he said, when the Lord asked me to do it, I was so excited because I knew I'd have more stories to tell. And can you imagine being that free from the love of money or from, from any kind of tie to money that if the Lord said, give it away, that you, you'd be free to do that? So that wasn't planned. Maybe that was for somebody there. But here's what I want to do. I want to break off the spirit of mammon, and I want to help you experience God as your provider. You know, a lot of people have made him Lord and Savior, but they haven't actually trusted God as provider. And here's my challenge here before we do this. Some of you, your finances might be a little bit of a mess. What if you were to say, you know what, I'm going to make trusting God the most enjoyable thing ever. See, money is just another way to be intimate with Jesus. See, there's biblical principles, but principles without the prince is more like witchcraft than kingdom. It's not just doing these principles out of our willpower. It's doing them in his strength with him. Money is just another way to be intimate with Jesus. So if you're here today or you're listening to this and your finances are a bit of a mess, what if you say, I'm going on an adventure with God? I'm going to make trusting God the most enjoyable thing ever. So to help you do that, let's break off the spirit of mammon here. So you got the piece of paper. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit a question. You're going to say, here's the question. Well, maybe, let's do this real quick. Uh, I, got, I got seven minutes left. I'm going to do a quick training on how to hear God's voice. You guys ready for this? I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to say your first, middle, and last name in your mind, not out loud. Okay? When I count to three. First, middle, and last name in your mind, not out loud. One, two, three. Okay, open your eyes. See, when God speaks to you, it's going to sound like you because your spirit and his spirit have been made one spirit. I think a lot of people, they're waiting for God's voice to have a lot more sizzle factor. You know, and they're like, oh, I'm your, I'm your father. You know, like they're waiting for Darth Vader's voice to come shaking or something like that. It's going to sound like your voice because your spirit, well, that's just, that's just me. Well, just you has been united to Christ. You've been made one with the three in one, right? You've been enfolded into Christ like an ingredient in a cookie dough, right? You're the fiance of Jesus. So little old you has the Holy Spirit living inside of you. So when, you're gonna, when you hear God's voice, it's going to sound like you, but it's going to be better than you could think, right? It's going to kind of come out of the blue or you're going to... Um, or are you going to get a word picture? God speaks to people in word pictures. And so I would have you uh, picture your favorite vacation spot, but you might not come back to me here. So as you do this exercise, you're going to get a picture or you're going to get a sudden knowing. You're just going to know it. Remember, it says Jesus knew in his spirit what they were thinking. That's how God spoke to him, too. All right, here we go. Here's the question with the Holy Spirit. Um, Holy Spirit, what am I worried about that you don't want me to worry about? OK, that's the question with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what am I worried about? that you don't want me to worry about. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take 30 seconds, and I want you to write down the answer on that piece of paper. And we're going to do something with that piece of paper. No one else is going to look at it. It's between you and Jesus. Holy Spirit, what am I worried about that you don't want me to worry about? Go.
I know you're not supposed to do like dead silence on television here, but uh, I believe the Holy Spirit's working on hearts right now. Here's what we're going to do here. 1 Peter 5, 7 says this, cast your cares on Jesus because he cares for you. So we're going to do something. We're going to take up an offering, but we're going to take up an offering of your worries. We're going to give these worries over to God. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pray a prayer, and we're going to break the spirit of mammon off. We're going to renounce the spirit of mammon. And then when I count to three, you're going to take those pieces of paper, and you're going to tear them up. It's going to be like a tear offering. I know it's one of not, not one of the five offerings of Leviticus, but it's going to be powerful. It's actually going to sever that... Uh, that, that, that relationship you had with mammon, trusting mammon, trusting money instead of trusting God, okay? So here's what I want to do. So get those pieces of paper ready. Some people, when they pray, they like to put, they like to put their hand on their heart because it just reminds them, God, this is coming from my heart. However you're comfortable, here we go. So I'm going to pray the prayer. I'm going to pause so you can pray it. You can uh, respond out loud or you can respond uh, just in silence. Here it goes. Uh, you're praying this. I'm done with the spirit of mammon. Let's just start again. Jesus, I'm done with the spirit of mammon. I'm done worrying and stressing about money. Forgive me for worrying. I'm asking you for a grace for my finances. Not because I deserve it. Because of what Jesus paid for. I renounce the spirit of mammon. I'm done looking at money as the source. You are my source, and I declare that nobody can take better care of me than Dad. All right, let's get those pieces of paper out. And the count of three, I want you to sever that tie and just be done with it. In the name of Jesus, one, two, three. I, I just believe that there's a sweet sound in heaven just going up to him there. And so um, let's end with some declarations. So the Bible says that the power of life and death is in the tongue. And that you, uh, so we're actually taking our faith and we're using our words. See, uh, faith is voice activated, right? It's you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. You're like, isn't that name it and claim it? No, it's believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. It's actually in the Bible, okay? So here's what I want to do is we want to say, is we want to take these declarations. Most of these are just right out of scripture. And so we're, we're using our faith to attach it to words. So I'm going to say it and you repeat it after me. Okay, you guys ready for this? I expect opportunities in favor. God wants me to prosper. In every area of my life, I live in abundance. I am blessed and I'm a blessing. Blessings come upon me and overtake me. I'm not sure, that's right out of Deuteronomy 20. I'm not sure if you've ever been like driving in your little car and like a big truck passes you by and you get like that whoosh feeling. That's the picture of being overtaken. Okay, so let's read Deuteronomy 28 again. Blessings come upon me and overtake me. All my debt is paid in full in Jesus' name. I have the power to create wealth in order to establish God's covenant on earth. I am a conduit for what God wants to do in this world. And here's the last one. Nobody can take better care of me than Dad. Now, as you guys are watching this, I really hope that touched your heart. And uh, as we continue this program, I just want to tell you a little bit about something. This is my first time here, but I just want to let you know, these people love Jesus, okay? And so this whole thing is bathed in prayer, and they're, they're all about souls and about helping people, getting out the message of hope. And so I just encourage you guys, as you're listening to this, this, this is a group you can trust. Like I said, they love the Lord. They're all about people, love God and love people. That's how you do it in my book. And so uh, thanks for having me. I think I'll be on in a little bit, but... Um, I think uh, there's different donor levels that you can go to. You can go to ctvn.org and give. Um, there's, uh, the phone number is 888-665. Do not type in 666, please. It's 665, all right? 888-665-4483. And uh, again, you can donate online at ctvn.org. And uh, there'll be lots of different ways you can give on this. Now let's go back to Amy. Pastor Jim Baker really dropping some truth bombs straight from the scripture and also adding in a little bit of humor. I would love to hear Darth Vader's voice in the voice of God. <laughs> Amy, do this. But you know what? It's so true. God speaks to us and we're just believing that you hear God's voice. We are here for this program, Hope Arising on Purpose, for a purpose. And you know, as I was just kind of preparing and thinking about this, 
I'm telling you, God has been speaking to me all week long about you. Here's two things God wants to do in your life. He wants to bless you, number one. And number two, he wants to build his kingdom on earth. And we get to be a part of that. You know, so many people, they, they watch the kingdom. They, they are watching Christian television. But then there's a group of people, which I believe is you, that are funding the gospel. Wow. Like, imagine being in a, in a position where you're not just watching. You're not just observing. You're not just on the bench. But you are actually personally, intentionally funding the gospel, funding the good news. You know, we, we love the scriptures here at Cornerstone. It's, it's what we live on. It's what we do. And it's interesting because the verse of the day on the Bible app actually is perfect for today. It's 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. But whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Come on now, each man and woman should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I love one translation a hilarious giver. You know why? Because we don't operate on this kingdom. We're, we're operating in another way. We're operating in another kingdom and his way is different than what our natural way is. So listen, when you give to God, it's amazing what he does for you. So I'm excited, Pastor Gary and Pastor Jay, about what God is going to do. Amen. And as you have heard that relevant word from Pastor Jim, we are encouraging you now. Would you pray about becoming a partner with us? We have some suggested levels. If you are, have never been a partner, maybe you've been a viewer, you enjoy the teachings, you enjoy the programming, we have a lineup of wonderful anointed uh, speakers and teachers and ministers. Some we show once a week, some are on every day. We have children's programming and we also just have a Messianic Jewish program. I believe we have something for everyone. And if you've never sown a gift, this is our 40 fourth year here at Cornerstone Television and we've been doing nothing except staying true to the vision of raising high that signal and proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ because as our founder Norma said so appropriately so everybody ought to know who Jesus is. We have $20 a month if you would like to join our family, that's a great level to come in. We also have $50 a month. And we also have $84 a month. Pastor Jay, that level is kind of a, a, a real bread and butter level for us. It kind of is, it, it's great when we can count on that consistent giving because everything we accomplish here at Cornerstone is only a result of our partners' faithfulness and generosity. That's right. So it doesn't matter whether or not what level you sow at, but it helps us to get the gospel of Jesus Christ all across the airwaves. Not only that, as you heard earlier in this broadcast, it helps us also to evangelistically reach out to other ministries and to empower them right here in McKeesport. There are wonderful ministries. So as you're giving here, not only does it cause us to keep the gospel going across the airwaves, there's so many ways that Cornerstone is being the arms and the feet of Jesus. So listen, right now, would you go to your phone and dial 888-665-4483. Be one of those to sow at $20 a month, $50 a month, $84 a month, wherever it is that you desire to sow, and God will richly bless your life, Pastor Amy. You know, there's a problem in our culture and our world right now, and it is that there are networks that are committed to producing um, fear and anxiety and hopelessness and dread. 
but we are dedicated to broadcast hope, faith, God's word, light, and truth. So can you imagine? There's a big problem in the world, but God has a solution in the kingdom. So we are committed at Cornerstone Television to broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the gospel. And we cannot thank you enough for being a part of what God is doing to help us broadcast. We're broadcasting, Pastor Gary, like shouting it from the mountaintop how good God is. Yes, it is. And for our thank you for your generosity, we have a, 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 a book that I believe will really minister to you. It's called Fear Must Not Win by my dear friend, Bishop Mark Filkey. And if you will sow at any amount, $20 a month, $50 a month or $84 a month, you could put it on your credit or your debit card, you will receive this book and I believe it will help you break that spirit of fear and hopelessness off of your life. You could also text to give. You could also go to ctvn.org or you could call 888-665-4483 Prayer partners are waiting right now to take your call. If you've been a partner with us in the past, why don't you call and recommit and get back on board with us again? You know, I like what he was sharing, Pastor Gary, about the spirit of mammon being broken. You have to understand that mm. fear, if you heard him talking, fear is what empowers that spirit of mammon. And I believe that even as you take a step to sow, as you take a step to further God's agenda, further his kingdom, God is going to bless you in supernatural ways. So while you go to your phone and dial 888-665-4483 and start breaking the back of mammon, we're going to go over to Amanda and Tom. You know, when I think about the work here at Cornerstone, Tom, I can't help but think of a life changed. And, you know, I was at a women's conference a few weeks ago, and I happened to run into a lady named Darlene, and she shared with me that 20 years ago, she was watching Cornerstone television and received healing in her body. Wow. Now, why does that speak to me? Because guess what? I was standing there looking at her, and she is a picture of health. And so this is the thing. God is really who he says he is. This network is needed, not just needed for the past, for the present, but for the future. I want Cornerstone Television to be the voice of truth for the future, for my children, for my grandchildren. I can tell you this network is all about preaching the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the truth, so that way you have something you can grab onto. And I'm so excited, Tom, because for anyone who calls in to give that gift, they're going to get an amazing book. And it's called Fear Must Not Win. And in this book, you know, he's talking about there's different kinds of fear. Oh, Who knew? Mm -hmm. But you need this in your hands because fear is one of those things just like Pastor Jim talked about. It hinders. It removes the protection of God. And you can't even walk in the prosperity that he has for you in every area of your life. You know, Amanda, as I, as I think about the, the testimony that you're sharing, I, th I see the prayer partners or somebody ringing right now. You know, we've had close to 3 million prayer calls come into this ministry in the That's past 44 years. That's 3 million people that have been touched by the Spirit of God and called in and received prayer. And, uh, you know, when we, when, when we think about that, we think maybe you've been one of those people that have called. Maybe you've been one of those people that have watched. And you need to get involved, okay? Maybe you've never been involved, but we'd like you to call now and be involved in the ministry of Cornerstone Television. We've shared a lot of great things with you tonight where it was a powerful message from Pastor Jim. There's stories about the Dream Center and other places where we're ministering, but we can't do it without you, without your involvement. So please call now, 888-665-4483. When you do, we've got some stuff for you. Amanda mentioned, Fear Must Not Win, a great book. Also, here's a wonderful book, Praying on Another Level. This is by Pastor J. Anthony Gilbert. It's going to revolutionize your prayer life. We could all use that, a, re a redo of our prayer life, right? And also, you will have a subscription to Hope Today. It's our monthly newsletter, has tremendous articles in there, even has recipes. This looks pretty good on the back. You know, so be involved in what God Wait, is doing. Tom. 
they're also going to get a t-shirt. How about that? You all are going to get a t-shirt. Right. Don't wait. Pick up your phone, 888-665-4483, or you know what? You can go to ctvn.org, or you can even text in. It's all on the screen, but make sure you connect with Cornerstone because we'd love to get to know you and partnership together to see God's kingdom come. So uh, one of those stories uh, is a story from our, our very own. And uh, we want to go to this now. It's, uh, it's by the host of Origins, Ray Heipel. One of the things I love about Cornerstone Television is the variety of programming, Christian programming, that you can find any time of the day or night. When I was a young man, a new Christian, and started to watch Cornerstone Television, there were a couple of programs that I would stay up and watch at 11 o'clock, 11.30 every night. And I can't tell you what a blessing that was to me and how it helped me to grow in my faith. And so I began to watch, not only watch programs and even set my VCR to take programs, but I began to support Cornerstone Television because I was convicted early on that these programs cost a lot of money to put on the air and it was benefiting me. And so I wanted to benefit other people and, and to continue to keep these programs on the air. So I would encourage you, if you're watching Cornerstone Television, to support them financially, to consider what you can do to help keep gospel-centered programming on the air.
Oh, if you have just joined us, you are watching Hope, a rising fundraiser. Pastor Jim Baker brought us a word about breaking that spirit of mammon off of our lives, which is rooted in fear. You know, the economy in the world is just filled with fear and uncertainty, but God's economy is different than the world's economy. And as you sow and as you give, as the word of God instructs us, you then are partaking in the economy of God. Luke 6.38 tells us when you give, it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. With the same measure you give, it will be given back to you. And I love this part. And God will cause men and women, sometimes even strangers, to give into your life. Remember, God's the source. He'll use a lot of different resources. So we're encouraging you to pray about partnering with Cornerstone Television. You could either sow a $20 a month gift or $50 a month or maybe $84 a month. You could put it on your credit or your debit card. The prayer partners are waiting to pray with you. The number is 888-665-4483 or you could text to give if you got your phone in your hand which I know a lot of you do even while you're watching television or maybe you're watching us on social media why don't you text your gift your pledge if you've never joined our family we would encourage you now is the opportune time if you enjoy our programming if you're blessed by what you see and hear on Cornerstone Television. We need your prayers and we need your partnership. We cannot do any of this without your help. Pastor Jay, it is our, our partners, not our viewers, it's our partners that cause everything that we do to happen. That's right, and as you make it happen for Cornerstone, God is going to make it happen for you. You know, I'm thinking of the scripture as well. When Isaac was in the time of the famine, he, his, his first thought was, let me go down to Egypt. He was going to go down where the spirit of mammon had originated. And I love what Pastor Jim said. When things dry up in your life, that's when the word of the Lord comes to you. And I believe even in this moment, you have heard the word of the Lord and that the spirit of mammon is trying to choke the life out of you but God is here today in this moment and has sent a word and I believe that as you respond in faith that just like Isaac when he sowed in the time of the famine in Genesis 26 the Bible said that he reaped in the same year a hundredfold return and the Bible says that he prospered began prospering and became very prosperous yes, yes. because he yeah. sowed. So would you join and partner with us and become one of those that God wants to prosper and break the back of mammon? Go to your phone right now, 888-665-4483, and make a decision right now. God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to sow a monthly gift of $20 or $50 or $84 a month or whatever it is that God puts upon your heart. But Pastor Amy, I believe that as we sow in this season, God God is going to break the back of mammon Amen. and release prosperity into people's no lives. No more fear. No more fear with finances in yes. Jesus' name. Listen, Sally has already called, and I hear the phones ringing right now. She is called from Oil City. Come on. Yes, I Oil love City. that. Oil City. That is a good place to be. And she, with her gift of $25 a month, for 12 months. So Sally, she just heard a word from the Lord, $25. We're so grateful for your partnership. I think about this scripture in Acts 19. It says that the power of God caused the word to spread yeah. and the people were greatly impacted. How many want to be a part and partnering with God to spread his word to people so that lives are impacted and changed? You know, my life is pretty impacted by Chick-fil-A. You know, so much so that I will give my dollars 
for their impact in my life. You know, my uh, electric company and my gas, uh, they're, they're, they're pretty impactful in my life and, and I bless them with my dollars. So I'm just wondering today if your life has been impacted and touched by Cornerstone Television Network, by any of our shows. I mean, that fabulous program, Sister to Sister. <laughs> I mean, it is a top notch. Pro I mean, those girls are some of the most amazing girls ever. I wonder if this network has impacted your life. And if it has, we're going to ask you to partner with us. This is the time. There is a window of opportunity. So we're asking you to give us a call at 888-665-4483. Any bit. Do your part. $20 a month, $50 a month, $84 a month. That is like the gas in our engine here. We're so grateful for you. When you give to Cornerstone Network, we want to send you a special gift of thanks. Will you watch this? Cornerstone Television wants you to live a life of boldness by learning how to overcome fear. This month, when you give your best gift, we'll send you Fear Must Not Win, finding peace, confidence, and courage in challenging times. One reader said Bishop Mark Filkey is one of those rare authors who addresses difficult life issues in a practical format while offering profound and relevant insights into how to overcome them. Fear Must Not Win fully deals with fear. It defines it, exposes it, confronts it, and offers us truths to rise above it. Your gift enables CTVN to broadcast inspiring Bible-based programs along with a fully staffed prayer line 24 seven. We can't do it without you. Call us today at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Well, I'm here with Pastor Jim and you just shared a great word that is gonna break the back of mammon, destroy the spirit of fear. But God speak of something to you, how you can take your money and turn it into a seed. Would you share with people what you feel God's put on your heart? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, a lot of things that happen in the Old Testament represent physical realities that represent spiritual realities in the New Testament, right? So they physically circumcise, you know, in the New Testament, there's a circumcision of the heart. They literally killed enemies. Now you're putting to death the enemies of your soul, those type of things. And so you see in Gideon, there's an interesting story there. So Gideon, he's hiding in the, in the grain silo from the enemies, and uh, he has an encounter with an angel, and then he makes... Um, he makes a loaf of bread. Remember, that is an offering. He makes a loaf of bread. And then, uh, you know, he, he got the armies. They get like too many. They get down to the 300. And then they're outside the enemy's camp. And so God has, God's got an interesting strategy. He says, you know, here's what I want you to do is I want you to go and listen to what they're saying. So he goes down there unarmed. And this guy says, listen, I had this dream. And he says, uh, I saw this loaf of bread rolling down the hill and it wiped out our tents. The guy says, we're toast. He's like, There's, it's that's the sword of the Lord and Gideon. What should we do? So I want you to see what happened is Gideon gave an offering of a loaf of bread and that loaf of bread went into his future and became his future breakthrough. What was wow. it in that dream that was? Wow. It was it was the loaf of bread. And so we see that when you give, it actually goes into your future and gives you for future breakthrough. And here's the thing. So I want to help you turn your money into a seed. So now we talk about how if you sow generously, you reap generously. That's not that's not something we made up. That's like the, that's the Bible pulling Amen. back the curtain and saying, this is how kingdom finances work. It's like having a fertile soil, but um, you, gotta, you have to put a seed in. I've seen people yelling, money cometh. Well, that's not how it works. Just yelling, money cometh. You have to put in that's a seed. Right. <laughs> you you walk right. up to a garden, you're like, vegetables cometh. <laughs> no, like, that's not how it works. You got to put a seed in there. And so you have an opportunity to step into this today. And so here's what I want to do is help you turn into a seed. So the world says, show me the money. God says, show me the motive, right? Your motive mm -hmm. is more important than the amount. And so 1 Corinthians 13, 3 says that if you uh, give away all your possessions and you surrender your body to be burned by the flames, if you have not love, it profits you nothing. So we're going to turn into a seed. I want to give you this phrase. You're going to wrap it in expectation, bursting with joy, sown from a heart of love. So wrapping in expectation, what am I putting my faith in? My faith is that, God, this isn't just leaving my life. This is, this is going into my future to give me a future breakthrough, right? Well, if I sow generously, farmers don't just throw seed and go, ah, just, you know, let's hope something happens. No, they're expecting a harvest. So when you're giving today, or whenever, whenever you're giving, uh, I want you to wrap it in expectation that, God, I'm going to give this, but this is also coming back into my life so I can be even more generous, right? So you're going to wrap it in expectation, bursting with joy. The Lord loves a cheerful giver, right? And uh, all sown from a heart of love. And so as you do it, I encourage you. What my wife and I like to do is we like to put it on our heart, and we just say, Lord, we just thank you that yes, we're yes. wrapping this in expectation. So some of you are getting ready to give tonight. Maybe you've already given. I want you to turn it into a seed. Lord, I just thank you that, uh, Lord, I'm wrapping in expectation. This isn't just 
leaving my life. It really is going in to, to bring a future breakthrough. And we're doing it from a heart of love because it's all about people. It's all about this message of hope and getting the gospel of, of Jesus out to people and bursting from a heart of joy is because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So he loves it because we're like him when we give. So that's how you turn money into a seed. That's so powerful because I love what you're saying because when we actually our seed has its future within it. And when you yeah, sow it, it's going to bring it forth and you're going to see a manifestation of, see, what you have in your hand, that $20 a month, that $50 a month, or $84 a month, is about your future. So as you're sowing now, your harvest is going to meet you in your future. Would you go to your phone right now and dial 888-665-4483 and become a partner. You just heard from Pastor Jim on how to break the back of man and destroy the spirit of fear and how as you wrap your seed in a heart and a motive of love, it's going to yield future blessing in your life. Go to your phone now, 888-665-4483 as we go over to Pastor Gary. Oh, thank you, Pastor Jay. Hey, listen, we've got some exciting news. We've had a group of our partners that have presented us with a challenge. That's right, a matching challenge. We have a $7,000 matching challenge, and we're going to put up a clock for 25 minutes. So you know what that means? That means in the next 25 minutes, Every dollar that you give and so will be matched. That's right, you're doubling the impact, doubling the ability for us, us to preach the gospel, to just raise that banner of hope to a hurting world. So I want you to pray because what I love about challenges, and I know a lot of you wait for challenge time, is everybody can do something. That's right. You can do a one-time gift or a monthly gift. You can put it on your credit or debit card, or you can just call and make a pledge. So we're going to pray, Lord, anoint this challenge in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And we're going to start the 25-minute clock in 5, 4, 3, Two, one, all right, everybody needs to go to your phone, 888-665-4483. Listen, I believe there's at least three of you, at least three of you that could sow that $84 a month or that $1,000 seed. Some of you could do a one-time gift or maybe you could do $20 a month or $50 a month. Listen, I know I'm talking to some of you. You have been a partner with us in the past. But because of the pandemic, because of the economy, you've stopped your giving. And God is calling you to come back home and recommit and get on board again and join the family of Cornerstone Television. Would you do that? We have a 20 five-minute challenge, $7,000. Everything is doubled up to that $7,000. As you go to your phone, 888-665-4483, or you can go to ctvn.org, or you can text to give. And you know, one of our dear, dear friends, oh, he's a dear friend of mine, Pastor Jarrell Gilliam, Reverend Jarrell with the Light of Life mission there in the north side. He has been a part of Cornerstone Television from the very, very beginning. And I want you to listen to his story of how Cornerstone Television has had a profound impact on his life. With Cornerstone, what I loved that happened was how God had positioned Cornerstone at the time of this pandemic to help to focus prayer during a time when we needed it. There was a lot of fear, there was a lot of anxiety out there, but God used Cornerstone to have this message of hope and to also to put our eyes back on Christ. Like don't get distracted by the things around you, but let's pray and let's see God answer prayer. That's one of the things that is synonymous with Cornerstone is that they are a station that highlights the miracles of God. And we see that time and time again. Light of Life has been a long-standing partner with Cornerstone. They have been ones that have helped to uh, show that homelessness is an issue when there's been problems. 
they've helped to share that and and we've seen the body of Christ mobilized around events that we have had around outreaches they've come there they've been a partner and so we we are stronger because of Cornerstone Another ministry that Cornerstone partners with, Light of Life on the north side here in Pittsburgh. And Amanda, I am so thrilled that we have this opportunity to partner with like the Dream Center, right. or here's another one, Light of Life. Again, I, look, I'm a missionary. Uh, I love ministering around the world. I love that we're partnered in Peru. We're partnered in Nepal. We're partnered in South Africa. Tremendous things that are happening in those places. But I'm also happy for all those things that we do right here, providing food, providing education, providing housing, providing clothing, all those things that are happening right here in our own city of Pittsburgh. God blesses that. And when you are partnering with, Cor with Cornerstone, and this is a great time in this challenge to partner, when you are partnering with Cornerstone, you have a part in all that. That's right. You know, Pastor Jim was talking about how giving money is being intimate with Jesus. And, you know, the works of the Dream Center, Light of Life, we have like 30 different Cornerstone Cares you know, things that we do. So I think it is absolutely astounding. Like God is up there saying, yay, go people of God, my children. But it says this in Matthew 25, talking about that intimacy with Jesus. And if we can just go to verse 34, it says, then the king will say to those on his right hand, come you blessed my of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. I, I, right now, Tom, I can't think of a better reason for you to pick up your phone or go to our website or text us to be a partner, something that is bigger than yourself, that you are able to latch onto and do something. And it's intimate because Jesus said, as you do it unto the least of these, you're doing it unto me. So can you imagine that that phone call, that visit to the website, whatever it is, whatever action you're doing to partnership, it's like you're doing it unto Jesus. What an amazing opportunity that God chooses to partner with us. Who are we? We're nothing, but we have the spirit of God in us and he is gonna use each and every one of us like that pipe that Pastor Jim talked about, that flow through, that conduit, that it has more to do than just with us. It has to do with the people around us. I pray that the Holy Spirit will quicken your heart, that that generosity will flow through you and you're gonna obey what God is speaking to you. Absolutely, good word, Amanda. That is yeah. a great word. Now, let me see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a peek up here. How much time do we have left in the challenge? Okay, all right, so we have, uh, what is 18, it? 1845. Okay, 1845. So in this challenge, 1845, we need you to get you involved. We need to see you go to the phone, get a hold of a prayer partner, get some prayer, and be part of what God is doing. So right now, let's go over to Pastor Jay. Thanks, Tom, that's right. There's an accelerated, impact when you get in on this. Listen, we only got 18 and a half minutes left and people are calling in. So don't stand there looking at me. You need to run to your phone and dial 888-665-4483 and partner with this word. This word to destroy the back of mammon, to destroy the spirit of fear in a crazy society of economic breakdown. The kingdom of God is thriving. We've got Lily that's calling in, sewing a one-time gift of $250. Thank you so much. Your impact is helping us. Your, actually, your seed is doubling our impact during this time. We have Howard who's calling in from Pittsburgh who increased his impact seed from $50 to $100 a month. Thank you so much. Who else is calling in, Pastor Jim? Uh, we got Lori from Johnstown, uh, one-time gift of $44, and Alana uh, from New Alexandra, a uh, monthly gift of $84. 
Hallelujah. And what's exciting about this is the only way to exercise faith for finances is through giving. You know, you can blow your shofar over your checkbook, you can march around your wallet seven times, hoping that the wall, you can do all these gimmicks, but the only way you can actually exercise faith for finances is through giving. And so I'm excited that people, I imagine that they're listening to what we talked about, turning it into a seed, that your motive matters more than the amount. And the Bible actually talks about sharing every good gift with your teacher. And so if you're receiving, I mean, the, I, I looked at the list of teachers that, the, that you guys are getting regularly from this, and this is an opportunity for you to respond and not just receive, 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 but to say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna enable other people to hear these world-class teaching, the, the program that they have here. And so it's, it's biblical for you to go ahead and give back, but do it with the right motive to say, you know what, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna wrap it in expectation. God, I'm giving this, it's not just money leaving my life, it's money going into my future. And it's bursting with joy because the Lord loves a cheerful giver and uh, also from a heart of love, the, the love for people, love for God. That's why we do this. And so, yeah, so exercise faith for finances and that's how you do it by giving. So yeah, so good job. I'm glad these people are doing this. It's awesome. Hallelujah. Come on, there's about 16 and a half minutes left in this matching challenge. Go to the phone, 888-665-4483. There are several of you. I know there's at least three of you that could sow at that thousand dollar level. You could do it one time on your credit or debit card, or you could do $84 a month. Pastor Jay, something happens at that thousand dollar level. I know it does. It does. It does. Matter of fact, I believe when you sow at the thousand dollar level, just like it was for the time of King Solomon, when he gave a thousand bullocks, it opened up the hidden wisdom of God. You know, we talk about how there's doors of hopes that are opening up. And I believe that even as you sow, it's amazing how God will be begin to reveal things to you that currently were not there. This is the only place in scripture after somebody gave that God showed up and said, what do you want? Something happens at that thousand dollar level. And I don't know what it is that you need. And I don't know what it is that you're looking for, but God knows. And now this is the time to destroy the power of mammon over your life. And I believe that even when you sow at that level, something breaks off of your mindset and God begins to bless you. The spirit of poverty breaks off of your life as you begin to see, as you put that seed in the ground and watch God begin to bless you. Would you go to your phone, dial 888-665-4483. Sow at that thousand dollar gift and watch what God will begin to do in your life. Now we got about 15 minutes left. While you go to your phone, check out this video as Noelle shares how her giving made an impact in her life. Cornerstone Television has really impacted my life in so many ways. I've been watching Cornerstone for many years now. And there was one particular time years ago when I was a nursing student and it was emotionally challenging as well as financially challenging. And I had been awarded a scholarship, but for some reason the money was kind of in like limbo and it wasn't being released in time for me to get um, the necessary tools and books and the pay tuition on time each semester. And so that was really, really challenging for me. But there was one day when I was just watching Cornerstone and I really felt impressed to start to sow a seed and to give a monthly um, seed of $17 a month. And I wasn't working at the time, but I felt like the Holy Spirit said, I want you to do this, sow a seed to meet a need that you have and to just trust him. And so there was one particular day when the financial offices were contacting me and they were saying if I didn't have the money sent in by a certain date, I was going to have to um, withdraw from school. And I really didn't want to do that. I wanted to finish my nursing career. And so I was watching Cornerstone and a woman named Miss Norma, who's since gone to be with the Lord, she was praying and she prayed and she said, Lord, there's a young girl out there. She's in nursing school and she's struggling and she needs finances. And Lord, you're going to send the money, release the money, send the money quickly. And I just grabbed that and I said, Lord, she's talking about me. That's for me. Well, a few short weeks after watching that, I think it was a telethon, after watching that and just like linking up my prayer with Miss Norma, the money was directly deposited into my account. And I just bless God. I thank God. And I, I thank Cornerstone. And then after that year of giving $17 a month, Cornerstone gifted me 
with this book. It's a daily devotional of inspirational promises. And I have it to this day. And I've used it and read it many times. So I just want to say thank you so much, Cornerstone. Thank you for impacting my life. This is how I fight my 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 With my worship and my praise tonight we say This is how I fight my This is how I fight my battles. And, you know, speaking of fighting, Pastor Jim, you made a statement when you were talking earlier to, about turning dollars into soldiers. Can you elaborate on that for a minute? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when you give, it's not just like, okay, it just goes into this static thing. So uh, I'm going to just take this for example. Here we are this night. So it's not just like money that's leaving your wallet. It's actually going and it's accomplishing purposes. So we yes. saw that it's, it's, you know, the dream center. It's yes. spreading the gospel. Yeah. You know, God says he's giving you the power to create wealth in order to establish his covenant on earth. So he doesn't just give you wealth so you can be fat and sassy and not have to trust him anymore, right? 
And it didn't say he just give you wealth. He says he gave you the power to create wealth. A lot of Christians are waiting for money to drop on their head like ripe cherries falling off of a tree. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. It says we create wealth. So one of the ways you create wealth is by adding massive value to your environment, which is what you guys are doing. Yeah. But I want you guys to get this. Wealth is attracted, it's not pursued. You see, the kingdom attracts what the world pursues. Yes. And so I'm not sure if you can see I'm holding this invisible magnet. It's U-shaped and it's uh, silver with red tips. It's yeah. right, you can see it here. So when the magnet points away, it attracts. Yeah. When the magnet is pointed towards you, it repels. And that's kingdom finances. When the priority of your finances is on God and other people, it's, it's attracted to that. When you're sowing generously, you reap generously. So wealth is actually attracted. So when you're turning dollars into soldiers, you're actually creating an ecosystem around you where money is attracted into you. The Proverbs talks about that all over the place. Where you sow generously, you reap generously. Proverbs talks about money being attracted into your life when you're creating value. So it kind of all ties together, but it has, remember I, I said this earlier, but the world says, show me the money. God says, show me the motive. Yes. And when the motive is, God, I want to spread your kingdom. When you're turning your dollars into soldiers to accomplish kingdom purposes, you're saying, you know what? This is important that this message of the gospel, this biblical teaching, the, the compassion projects that are happening here, that those are important enough that I'm going to turn my dollars into soldiers. I'm not going to just put it into, uh, someone was mentioning Chick-fil-A. Oh, yeah, we, we love Chick-fil-A. Uh, yeah. That's good. Yeah, God's chicken. We love the Lord's chicken. But, um, <laughs> but, it, but you know, the Bible says share every good thing with, it, with your teacher. And so uh, it's, it's, it's making that impact. It's about, in, you know, biblical prosperity is not about toys and trinkets. It's about influence and impact. Amen. And when you're taking your money and you're putting it into projects like this, then you're having influence and impact. You bring up such a great point because, I mean, I think almost some people in the world would watch what we're doing now and say, that's toys and trinkets. Right. But they, it's like you don't have a clue about what's going on. You're talking about turning dollars into soldiers. You know, Pastor Jim, we don't run commercials. We don't have paid sponsorship. It is, it is God's people providing for the vision and the mission of, and here, here's what we're doing, Pastor Jim. You know how we pastor churches. You're in, I'm in Pittsburgh. You're in Ohio. We can't go into everybody's home. Right. We can't go in the car with them. We're not sitting there when they're getting ready and dressed in the morning, while they're cooking dinner and turning. But they are for Christian television. Yeah. Christian television it's can incredible. go where churches and pastors cannot go. Yeah. And, and so if the church is like the army, we are boots on the ground and yeah. we are here to establish his kingdom. Christian television is the airwaves. We are the Air Force. That's a good analogy. Taking yeah. over the airwaves with the gospel. We, we are literally, I love that statement, turning dollars into soldiers. So I'm calling on the soldiers today. And you know, we're giving you a couple of options for amounts that you can step in on. This is not like if you don't give $20 a month, you can never watch our channel again. That's not what we're saying. We're not trying to manipulate you. We're not trying to twist things around. We're not saying if you'll do $84 a month, God will do something. I'm saying this is just a point of contact. It's just like, it's sort of like a vision. Step in at $20 a month. Step in at $50 a month. Step in at $84 a month, whatever you can do. I know that you can do something. If you think about that gift of $84 a month, that's like just a little over $20 a week. And I know that, man, coffee is expensive. You know, my iced tea can really <laughs> rack up the buck. I mean, I could take that and I could take those dollars and turn it into soldiers. So I want to say, give us a call at 888-665-4483 and turn the beautiful blessing gift of dollars and finances that God has blessed you with and let's give it to the kingdom and let's do some serious damage to the kingdom of darkness and we're so grateful for you. Let's go to Tom. Thanks, Amy. You know, we've talked about some great stories. And by the way, I want to say there's just a few minutes to call in during this challenge. So you need to go to the phone right now, 888-665-4483. Call in and be part. Get out off the sidelines. Get in the game. Be part of what Cornerstone is doing, what God is doing through Cornerstone. Now, we've talked about local ministries, Light of Life, Dream Center, wonderful ministries that are doing great things here in the Pittsburgh area. But here's one around the world. And we have the opportunity recently to uh, partner with the uh, Voice of the Martyrs and listen to this testimony that they sent back to us. They said, thank you so much for the generosity of Cornerstone TV on behalf of our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. 
This year alone, your gift will help us smuggle 500 Bibles to Iranian Christians. This will almost assuredly be their first copy of God's Word and possibly their last. They will in turn share it with many others. You and the Cornerstone family are appreciated and make a difference in this project and in reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ through your program. And guys, I don't know. There's nothing I like more than to hear that we're getting the word of God to people that are struggling to acquire it, to struggling to have it in a closed country. You're seeing God is doing some shaking in Iran. He's doing some things that are bringing many people. They're questioning Islam and they're coming to Christ. And we want to be part of that. So God has enabled us to partner with a couple of different ministries. We're seeing great things happen. So we want you to be involved. Hurry up right now and get to your phone. We just got a little bit of time left. Let's go back to the studio. All right, folks, we got less than two minutes left in this matching challenge. Come on, if we're going to meet this $7,000 challenge, we need everybody to do something. I know there's at least three of you that could sow with that $1,000 level, $84 a month or one time. You could put it on your credit or debit card, 888-665-4483. And for everyone that gives, you'll receive Bishop Mark Filkey's book, Fear Must Not Win. If you are bound by fear, listen, the Bible says God has not given you that spirit of fear, but he's given you power, love, and a sound mind. Let's get delivered and set free so that you can be all that God is calling you to be. And you know, people are calling in, Pastor Gary. We've got Linda from State College who has given a monthly gift of $100. Thank you so much. And you know, and if you've never partnered with us here at Cornerstone, listen, if you choose right now to partner with us in the middle of this matching challenge, I am so pleased to announce that you can even get my very own book, my first book that I've ever published. It's called Praying on Another Level. It's a 30-day prayer journal from 25 years of ministry, uh, revelation each and every day on why prayer is vital. There it is right there, that <laughs> moving book there. So call in right now, 888-665-4483. If you've never partnered with us, I would love for you to get this in your hand. I promise you, not just because I wrote it, but it's uh, anointed by God to really shift your prayer life to the next dimension. So go to your phone, be a partner, sow a gift of $20 a month, $50 a month, and or even that gift of $84 a month. You know, when they sow at that gift level, Pastor Gary, something supernatural happens. That's right, it does. And you are helping us to just proclaim the good news of the gospel. So many people are hurting right now. You know, how our viewership is up. It's up over 18%. Why? Because people are looking for yeah, hope. They're right. looking for answers. Many are fearful. Many are just upset by all the chaos and confusion in this world. But thank God. God, yeah. that, that we have the answer and his name is Jesus. But we need your help to be able to get that good news out. The Bible tells us how can they hear unless there be a preacher? That's right. And how can there be a preacher unless he's sent? Come on, that's so true. So it's important that you go to your phone, partner with us so then we can get the gospel of Jesus Christ into the dying heart of humanity. And you know what? As you go to your phone, we've got a special message from our very own Katie Farrell of Dashing Dish. Take a look at this. I believe so specifically in partnering with Cornerstone because I love the heart of the people behind it. Everything that we do is to expand God's kingdom. Everybody is looking for creative different ways that we can reach people that wouldn't be reached otherwise. It was so funny because I was watching one of the Dashing Dish segments and then I stumbled upon hard questions and then that got me into watching Sister to Sister and God spoke to me right where I was in a specific season through those programs. And so it's so wonderful to see how God can use so many different people in so many different walks of life and really get the gospel and the message of Jesus Christ out. At Cornerstone Television, our heart beats to reach just one more with the hope of Jesus Christ. Even when our world shakes, God can never be shaken. Will you join us in our life-saving mission? We can't do it without you. Our ministry is viewer-supported, which means you help us to spread the gospel. 
partner with us today through Easy Pledge, our automatic monthly giving program. Your contribution keeps our shows on the air. It makes our prayer lines available 24-7, and it allows us to support other ministries through Cornerstone Care. Easy Pledge automatically deducts your gift every month using your credit or debit card. Sign up today by calling 888-665-4483 or by visiting our website at ctvn.org backslash donate. Thank you for helping us to be a bridge of hope to reach just one more. Just one more. That's who we're always trying to reach because, you know, Jesus said that we, the, the good shepherd, you know, he leaves the 99 and goes after the one. So we're always looking for that one, that one that's out there. We'd like for lots of people to come, but Amanda, God is always concerned with the one. He's always that's looking right. for that one because we're all that one. We're all that one. We all needed to come to him. And that's what the, the ministry of Cornerstone Television is all about. It's so important. And we desire for you to help us to reach the one. Like, picture that person in your mind that you know needs to find Jesus. What is their life worth? Just say that God might would use Cornerstone Television in their pathway to find Jesus. Wouldn't it be well worth your partnership? Guess what? There are hundreds of people that are just like that. They are finding Jesus through our network. And, you know, it goes back to Russ and Norma. I can just remember uh, Norma saying, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. She had such a passion. And that passion did not come from herself. It came because she was filled with the spirit of the living God. And she began to beat like his heart beated if I could say that. I don't know if that's proper English, but it did. She had the heart after Jesus, and she just wanted everybody else to know what she knew. And I thought of the, the quote that Pastor Jim had said tonight, mm -hmm. nobody can take care of me better than dad. Absolutely. That's what Norma found out. Nobody can take care of me better than dad. And so right now, this is probably like the most favorite part of television that Tom and I get to be a part of because I want to take this opportunity to tell you about that dad that we're talking about, our father God, who is the most generous dad that you could ever know. And it says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. He didn't just give anything. He gave his only begotten son to become a sacrifice for you and for me, that we might have eternal life. This is a miraculous thing that God has done. And maybe you're that one, and you don't know that dad that Pastor Jim was talking to. You don't know why Miss Norma would say everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Well, this is why. Because what Jesus did is he washed us clean. He gives us this amazing opportunity to have a relationship with a dad who will never fail you, a dad who will never forsake you. So right now, if I'm talking to you and you're that one that needs to know that dad, I'm going to give you the opportunity to ask him to come into your heart. So just speak this after me. Jesus, I invite you into my heart I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. And I invite you not only to be my Savior, but to be the Lord in my life. If you prayed that simple prayer, that's the first step of your Christianity, of walking this out. Now, there's a journey that you're going to be on, and that journey requires you to discover more of who God is. And I'm telling you, you can do that by watching Cornerstone Television. Tom is part of our the team that chooses the programs that we put on, and it is intentional. Every program that is put on is so we know that you are able to grow in your relationship with Jesus. So I encourage you right now, if you have made that commitment and you want to make Christianity part of your lifestyle, because that's really what it is. It's a walk. It is a journey. And we want to do that with you. Pick up your phone and give our prayer partners a call because they are standing by. They're waiting for that call. They desire to help you know and discover who Jesus really is. You know, I'm just 
listening to you. I've got this silly smile on my face because this is what makes us happy. This is what makes this ministry happy. For you to know God, for you to come into a relationship with Him, that's what we care about. So please call that number right now, 888-665-4483. Tell the person you just prayed with Amanda. Tell them you pray with Amanda and, and they'll, they'll pray with you and they'll send you some material, get you started following Christ. Well, right now, we're going to go back over to Pastor Gary. Thank you, Tom and Amanda. Hey, for just a few moments, we'd like to talk to those of you that, that Romans 12 says you have the ministry of giving. You know, we're all called to give, to sow, but there are some of you, and we're not talking to everybody, some of you that have been blessed. Maybe you're up there in age, You've, you, maybe you're retired, you have a nest egg, maybe the Lord's blessed your business, or maybe you've just been blessed with that gift to be able to give. And if we are going to meet our goal during this Hope Arising fundraiser of over $200,000, we need some of you that could sow a gift of maybe $2,300 in this year of 2023, or maybe $5,000 or $10,000, $25,000. Pastor Jay, Everybody can't do that, but I know there are several people that are watching that can. That's right, and so if you're watching right now, we really do need your help in order to reach our goal. But you know what, as you sow, God is gonna begin to bless your life in a supernatural way. You may not need finances, but maybe there's something else that you need, or maybe it's just a matter, God is just impressing it upon your heart. I believe even when you sow in moments like this, a lot of times you're sowing even into your children, your grandchildren, into the future, even as you had talked about, Pastor Jim, you talked about how it's all wrapped up and how the blessing of our future is wrapped up within the seed. You know, you've got some testimonies of people that have sowed and have been impacted and how their lives have been blessed. Would you share with people those testimonies? Yeah, yeah, this is just kind of a quick one. So, you know, there's a, there's a saying out there that says, um, money can't buy happiness, right? You've heard that before. Um, well, neither can poverty, right? Poverty can't buy That's anything, right. right? But um, people who say money can't buy happiness, they just simply haven't given enough of it away. I'll tell you what, I watch, I watch money buy happiness over and over again. I'm not talking about eternal joy or eternal life. And so I remember I was in my office, and there was a knock at the door. There was a young man selling cable television there. And I, um, I wasn't really in the mood to hear what he had to say, so I'm kind of shutting the door in his face. And uh, he kind of gives me one of those one-liner over, overcome objections, you know. And so I let him in the house, end up uh, praying for him. He ends up getting healed. And he starts sharing his story. He says, listen, I'm living with this girl, and uh, her sister just died of a heroin overdose. And uh, he's like, we, we don't have the money for the funeral. We're going to be inheriting in her kids. And I felt like the Lord said, write the check for the funeral. And so I said, well, how much do you need? And so I went in the other room, wrote the check, and so now he's, uh, he's really crying. And so I began to I share the Lord with him. I showed up at the funeral, and, um, and it was a pretty rough crowd. It looked like there was about to be a fist fight there, and uh, I was kind of hiding in the back. I'm like, you know, because in a fight, my, my best uh, thing's probably going to be headbutts to the fist, right? What am I going to do in a fight? And so this big dude comes out to me. He says, hey, what do you, uh, he says, are you the guy who gave money to the funeral? I was like, yes, sir. And, um, and his eyes well up with tears. He says, man, I've never seen anything like that before. And then uh, this, the guy who was in my house who didn't even believe in God uh, a few days ago, he's, he says, hey, everybody, that's my pastor. I'm like, your pastor? You didn't, believe in God? you didn't believe in God two days ago. What are you talking about here? And then the two kids that he was now going to be raising from the sister who died came running and jumped in my lap and then called me Uncle Jim. And it's like, what, what is going on here? I'll tell you what's going on here. It's, it's Proverbs, 25, uh, Proverbs 25, 24 in the Passion Translation. It says, your surprising generosity will awaken the conscience of an unbeliever and reward him with favor. As we're talking to these uh, people who have a potential to give more significant gifts, or any size gift, what it is, I want you guys to see this. It, it, when we talked about turning your dollars into soldiers, listen to that verse again. The context is an unbeliever. Your surprising generosity will awaken their conscience, and God will reward you with favor. And so I actually have a relative who was going through a very difficult uh, time in his marriage, and he actually got saved on Christian television. He was in a very dark time and gave his life to it. What are we talking about? Your surprising generosity will awaken their conscience. And so people's generosity to be able to spread the good news of the, of the message of God. And so here's the thing, guys. God's not just trying to get you into heaven when you die. He's trying to get you into heaven before you die. Okay, he's trying to get you into the kingdom of heaven, his, his, his presence and his power. That's what this network is, is teaching you how to live in that kingdom. And so uh, if you've got the ability, uh, like I said, uh, money can't buy happiness. Well, I've watched it buy happiness over and over again. And this, uh, your, your donation will, uh, will make lots of people happy as they find out the good news of what Jesus is really like. 
Amen. So go to the phone. If that's you, 888-665-4483. If you could sow 5000 or 10000 20000 $25,000, the Lord, you know, the Bible says, my sheep know my voice. That's right. You, you, you'll hear, you know, God doesn't ask you for what you don't have, but sometimes he'll stretch you to do something maybe more than you thought you could give. And if you'd like to talk to our president, Steve Johnson, or our COO, uh, Tom Hollis, you could just tell the prayer partner you'd like to talk to them. But if you are one of those that could give at that, what our founder Norma used to say, our sizable <laughs> gifts, <laughs> go to the phone right now. So go to your phone and sow that gift of 5,000, 10,000. Maybe you mentioned 2,300, but maybe it's 23,000 in this year. And I believe that as you sow, God is going to bless you in a supernatural way. Going to flood your heart with joy, even as Pastor Jim just mentioned. And so as you go to your phone and dial 888-665-4483, listen in as Whitney shares how God used Cornerstone Network to work a miraculous work in her life. The way that I found Cornerstone was I was a stay-at-home mom and I used to put it on every morning. That would be a part of my quiet time with the Lord. So I would start my mornings reading my word and spending time with him. I would put Cornerstone on and watch Joyce Myers every morning. And then after that would be sister to sister. And it just ministered and blessed me so much. Joyce Myers is just so seasoned in the word. So it really helped me at the beginning of my walk with God. Um, I learned so much in, the, in that sweet, sweet season of my life. Six years ago is when I started watching Cornerstone. And sister to sister, I used to love how real they were. And just each and every one of the women on that panel, it was just amazing. Pastor Amy, I loved Pastor Amy so much. And Flo, Sister Flo. All of them really were just a blessing. But, you know, those were my girls. So I just really enjoyed watching them. I just see the love of God in this place. I just see how the Lord works and how... It's such a place where there's a heart for people. And it's so important that Cornerstone is on air so that it can help the people who are suffering with loss, who are depressed, who may have different issues, you know, that they're going through. Um, and it's important for the gospel of Jesus Christ to be out on air the way that it is through Cornerstone. It's important that they our generation hearkens to the words that are being spoken here because this is indeed a place that is operated by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's here. So it's so important that our generation watches and tunes into Cornerstone. Um, whenever I first tuned in, I was not even the age I am now. I was 25 years old whenever I first started watching Cornerstone. So no matter what age you are, Cornerstone is important and vital in the times that we're in. Amen, Whitney, well said. Man, I tell you what, she, she mentioned sister to sister. And can I just say like, when I think about the hours and the years, it's, it's almost a decade that we've been showing up every year, every month. We're talking hundreds of you know, shows. We're talking thousands of questions answered. And here's the deal. The world has shows where they're talking about just their worldly points of view. But to have a Christian television network, Tom, that is dedicated to, you know, biblical thoughts. They're, I mean, yeah, a, a yeah. biblical worldview. People stop me everywhere and they're like, oh my gosh, are you the girl? I, I watch, I have it recorded. I watch it over. I just like to hear the different perspectives from, from five Christian women. Right. And we show up, but guess what? There are givers showing up, yeah. Tom, yeah. every year to make this possible. Absolutely. I feel the same way about hard questions. You know, when we yeah. gather all those pastors together, and answer the questions from the Bible, hard questions that people yeah. have. People are wrestling with some difficult things. So we want to just speak to maybe a, a special group of you tonight who have never given. You've never supported Cornerstone Television. You've watched for years. Maybe you've watched for a few months. Maybe you're like Whitney. You, did, you just sort of found us, but you've been blessed and you've never given. I want to just say, 
Come on into Come the on. family. Yeah. Come on into the water. Come on into the game. You know, I can remember uh, playing sports and you didn't want to be on the sidelines. You know, you wanted to get in the game. I played a lot of basketball. And you don't. You didn't want to no. be that, yeah. that sixth or seventh or eighth or ninth man. You wanted to be in, in the, the game. game. So please, this is the way to get in the game. You need to be a part of what Cornerstone is doing. God will bless you in so many ways. But the key thing is that you will be bringing the gospel and bringing God's truth to people like Whitney, life-changing gospel, life-changing message. You'll be part of that. Yes, God is going to bless you for that, for your involvement. It's one of the most true things I know that he'll do that. But you know what? Put that first thing first. Support the work of God's ministry here in Cornerstone. I like that idea of get in the game. Listen, my son is in cup soccer. We are going to so many soccer practices. We're going to games that are two and a half hours away this weekend, three hours away. I'm not doing all of that work and spending all of that money for him to not play, Tom. And I'm wondering if our father kind of maybe is thinking the same thing. Like, uh, I paid good. a pretty high price for you yeah. and I've laid it all out. And then I've given you resources. I've given you talent. I've given you abilities get in the game. And so we're giving you an opportunity right now to get in the game. Give us a call at 888-665-4483 and just give and be a part of what God is doing at Cornerstone Television. Let's go to Pastor Jay. You know, it's so exciting, Pastor Jay, that God is moving here at Cornerstone Amen. and that we get to be a part of something that's bigger than you or myself. Right. And, you know, when we think about the different giving levels that we have, I love this example you did for your ministry where you sat out that uh, McDonald's meal, yeah, yeah. you know, like the reality of what we're asking for partnership. Talk to us a little bit about make that number real to us. Well, you know, the reality is, is that whenever you saw, she's talking about, I had a gala and I did some uh, happy meals and we were trying to raise money to help for a few, which matter of fact, Cornerstone also helps right. uh, to promote uh, what it is that we're doing with our East Liberty Women's Care Center, which is our pro-life pregnancy center. And so I put that out there, just say, that's all that it is in order, uh, a happy meal, I think it was a month at the time. That's and right. so it's the same way with $20 a month, $84 a month, $50 a month. Sometimes people break it down and say, maybe it's a cup of Starbucks a day or a week or whatever it might be, because Starbucks is expensive. Whatever it is that you're willing to sacrifice for, but as you do that, and give that up for God. It's, he's going to enlarge your tent. He's going to enlarge your territory. Remember this, God is not always looking for somebody that he can give to. He's looking for somebody that he can give through. And as you partner here at Cornerstone, become one of those, so 20, 50, or $84 a month, God is going to bless you and enlarge your territory. I like what he says, he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. That's right, all right. And then when you give, especially you first time givers, you're gonna get a t-shirt. You're gonna get a book about overcoming fear. And then Pastor Jay's very own taking your prayer walk to another level. All right, Pastor Jay, can you give us a little insight on that? This is a free one, but you gotta call and support Cornerstone to get the rest of them. Can you give us a tidbit from that book? Just sure, something. one of the things I believe that prayer gives you the ability, I talk about this, to overcome sin in your life. Prayer gives you the ability to walk in a greater ability of discernment within your life. Prayer empowers your spirit man to live life on another level. That's just three. There are several others. Prayer is the way that we step into a greater boldness of evangelism. If you can't pray, you can't evangelize. All of that and the t-shirt and the books, all that is if you will call in 888-665-4483 and become a first time donor. Would you partner with us and allow God to bless you in a supernatural way? As you're a blessing to us, God is going to bless you and we're going to see the kingdom of God further like never it's before. so true. You know, we were out in East Pittsburgh this week and I see the one gentleman, his name is Darren and he's always so excited to see me. It's Amanda from Cornerstone Television. Just let me tell you, you are making a difference when you partner with us. There are so many people being impacted by the influence that we get to have. Amen. But we're going to go back out with Pastor Gary right now. And, uh, hey, folks are calling. Right. Uh, <laughs> Leslie is called for the very first time joining our family nice. at $20 a month. Thank you. 
Patricia is calling from Altoona with a one-time gift. Hey, we like Altoona. And Thomas is calling with his gift of $20 a month for 12 months, all the way from Murraysville, Pennsylvania. Right. So how awesome is that? Yes. Yeah. Pastor Jim, would you just pray for our Cornerstone family and for all that have sown and given in response to breaking that back of mammon? Yeah, absolutely. Not just giving, but investing. You know, it's really investing in lives, investing in the kingdoms. So we talk about sowing and reaping, but uh, I think another analogy is investing. So, yes. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness, and it's all about Jesus. And so, Lord, I pray that every person that is uh, give, has invested, has sown, that, Lord, that they would reap the blessing of it. Lord, that everything that they put their hand to, that it would prosper. And, Lord, they would go on an adventure of trusting you, Lord. It would be the most enjoyable thing ever that they would live free from the spirit of mammon, that, Lord, all the craziness financially in this planet, they, it would not touch them, Lord, because they've given their heart into an unshakable kingdom. So I pray peace and grace for each person in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for coming and for just me. making an eternal deposit in our Cornerstone family. It's been fun. Pastor Amy, we got lots more hope arising. Oh man, uh, every day we are going to just concentrate this amount of time to building and investing into the kingdom of God. You know, our money and our dollars go to so many places. And this is just a great time to stop and to think about all that God has done for us, all that he's blessed us with and how we can give back to him, how we can bless the works that he is doing. And Pastor Gary, God's hand. I feel God's hand on this ministry. I feel yes. God's hand when we come here. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. All I can say is it's real and we're still here 44 years later Amen. and not only we're not just barely scraping by pastor gary but we are thriving and we are flourishing so i want to be a part of a group and invest where things are popping things are happening for for good and so this is your moment this is your opportunity don't forget to call at 888-665-4483 and invest in the kingdom business because remember we can't do any of this without your prayers and partnership. Well, we're gonna to go to Pastor Denise Graves and her friends to take us out. God bless you. Shout. 